What's going on guys? There's a lot of, lot of, lot of transfer news going on right now. And you know, we're in the middle of the season. I say middle. Coming near the end of it, but the football season's still going on. It don't stop the transfer news. It don't stop the transfer activity. Um, and the big one in the last couple of days, of course we know Leroy Sane, he's now moved to Bayern Munich. But today we are also hearing that Jude Bellingham has agreed to join Borussia Dortmund. Um, the Birmingham City teenager, was he 16, 17 years old? Hot, hot prospect. Um, he's rejected Manchester United, turned them down, even after meeting with Ferguson, meeting with Solcher, coming to uh, Carrington, having a tour with his family. He's rejected them. He rejected them for what he has classed as a, a better offer in terms of his footballing um, progression. And you know what? I don't really blame him. I don't really blame him. I mean, in the past, years ago, you wouldn't really get British players, especially at this age, but British players in general, really leaving England to go and play for um, foreign clubs, especially not if it wasn't the elite of the elite. So we're talking Real Madrid, Barcelona, you know, the, the top uh, clubs in Italy, for example. Possibly, possibly a Bayern Munich, but generally it would be, it would be Spain and um, Italy. To go to Borussia Dortmund as a teenager, Englishman, over Manchester United, questions have to be asked. But what are those questions? Are those questions in terms of Manchester United or is it just the landscape of football? Because the reality is, we've seen examples in you know recent terms and we're going to hear a lot more um, of this guy throughout the summer, Jadon Sancho, Reese Nelson, for example. These people, these players have left English clubs, whether on loan or permanently, and gone abroad to Germany, to the Bundesliga specifically, to get game time to, to, to develop as footballers and then possibly come back to England, come back to, to their parent club in, in Reese Nelson's case as a better footballer, more experienced footballer, and then fight for a first-team position. We know Jadon Sancho left... Um, Man City, Pep wanted him to stay. Pep wanted him to kind of go through the same, uh, what's the word, um, integration into the first team, like Phil Foden, like Eric Garcia, who we're now seeing um, feature more and more in the in the City lineup. But they're a few years behind Phil Foden because the Phil Foden, sorry, behind Jadon Sancho because he's gone to Bristol Dortmund, first choice, putting up numbers, two seasons straight, and now. His, his value's gone through the roof. Um, whatever contract he gets next, whether it's at Dortmund or elsewhere, it's going to be a big, big contract because he's proved himself at the highest level. So there's two ways to do it. You can, of course, go through the, the system, like Phil Foden, like um, Eric Garcia, and hope that you can make it at the club you're at. Or you can say to, like, you know, Jadon Sancho, like a Paul Pogba, for example. Nah, I'm good enough to be playing right now. The club that I'm at ain't going to be playing me. So I'm going to go somewhere that's where I'm going to get the game time and develop. And he's done that. And maybe Jim Bellenden is saying the same thing. He's seen that, you know, Borussia Dortmund are right now probably their leading club in the top five European leagues for developing young players. Um, you know, they've got, they, 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 their team is very young. If you look at your know, Reina, I want to say Claudio Reina, but that's his, that's his dad. I can't remember his first name. Um... And you've got uh, Erling Haaland, who came from Salzburg. You know they've got a lot of young players in that in that squad that he knows if he's good enough, he's going to get opportunity. That might not be the case at Man United as a central midfielder. He's got Pogba, Matic, Fred, McTominay all ahead of him as it stands. He would have to prove that he's better than all of those players before he really gets a chance in the first team. And being better than Paul Pogba ain't going to be easy. Being better than Matic ain't going to be easy. And Fred and McTominay has done, have done well so far. So it'll be interesting to hear the conversations that actually happen between him, you know, Fergie and, and his parents and Solskjaer when he came to Carrington, why he didn't feel that this would be the place for his development. As I said, I can't blame him because the proof is in the pudding in terms of what Dortmund are doing. Um, compared to, let's say, the, the years of underachievement for Man United recently. I think in the last year and a half under Solskjaer, we've definitely shown that we do give youth a chance. Um, Mason Greenwood being the, the, at the top of that list. 
and then you've got the likes of Brandon Williams, Scott McTominay, of course, um, for example, and then you know got the likes of Taish Chong, who's had his opportunities. Unfortunately, Gomez had to leave, um, but Ethan Laird, he's he's been called up to the first team squad. So, Man United have a history of giving young people players a chance. Solskjaer knows that's the Man United way, and I know he's fully behind that. So it's no surprise that he's he, he gone for the likes of you know Holland and Jude Bellingham because young players and giving those the, the top young talent a platform of Man United is what they've always done, what we've always done. Um, so as a Man United fan, it's disappointing that he's chosen to go to Dortmund. But the fact is right now, Dortmund is probably the best stepping stone for any young player. It's a stepping stone to greater things. You go there, you get your experience, you get your opportunities without as much pressure. You know, playing play for Man United is a lot of pressure. Playing for Dortmund, you're, no one's expecting anything other than maybe to play good football. So you go there, you know, earn your stripes, and then you get that big move. Um, and if he is as talented and as he turns out to be the footballer that we all expect him to be, Jude Bellingham will get that big move. And maybe Man United will be back in for him um, in, you know, two or three years' time with a big, big offer um, and a big contract. So, you know, I, I don't, I am not, I, I'm disappointed because, of course, I want all the best talent at Man United, but I'm not mad. I'm not mad. And the way I'm looking at it, Possibly, if this helps us get Sancho, who for me is, is more of a key, then so be it. Maybe Dortmund are, are you know, they're, they're, they're willing to, you know, spend whatever money, 25 million euros, I think it is. And they know other monies are coming in for the likes of, you know, Jadon Sancho, for example. If Man United, I don't know what our transfer budget is this summer. But if getting Bellingham meant that we don't have the funds to maybe plug other key areas in the team, then maybe it's good that we missed out on it. Maybe it is. Um, but all of that will kind of prove or come to fruition come the end of the transfer window because we don't know. Right now, we might miss out on Bellingham, miss out on Sancho, miss out on this one, that one, Grealish, Van der Beek, and don't get anyone. And we're like, damn it, we should have gone all out for Bellingham. I don't know. I don't know. But... As it stands, you know, I'm disappointed, but I'm not mad. I'm not mad. The guy, from all intents and purposes, has a big future ahead of him. And if we are where we need to be in the next three years, then I'm sure at that stage of his career, if he's done what he needs to do, he's going to catch our eye and we're going to catch his eye. And maybe we can meet up at a, a, another date. But as it is, he's decided to go to Borussia Dortmund and I wish him all the best over there. Um, another player I mentioned Gomez briefly he has now left Man United Angel Gomez um, and I, but I think that might be another case of he doesn't feel he's going to get the opportunities that he needs um, you know the likes of Bruno is ahead of him in the pecking order and maybe disagreements between his progression between himself and um, Solskjaer and the other coaches he's decided to to carry on his football education elsewhere he hasn't actually decided where to go yet um, but he knows that it's not at Manchester United so uh, good luck to him as well. Um, other big news, as I mentioned right at the beginning, Leroy Sane, he has joined Bayern Munich from Man City for £54 million pounds total, um, including add-ons. So I think it's 40, £45 million plus £10 million pounds add-ons, um, or just under £11 million pounds in add-ons. I think it's trophy-related and you know based on Bayern Munich. If it's anything to do with the Bundesliga, those <laughs> those ten millions will be, will be paid back very very soon. That's a pretty one team league going on there as it stands. We, I hope it changes, but when you're losing talent like you know Werner from Leipzig, I would say lost Cato before that, you know Sancho possibly leaving Borussia Dortmund, it's going to be very hard for anyone to challenge Bayern Munich there. Um, and that's that's a, a frightening front line that Bayern Munich's going to have there: Sane on the left, Gnabry on the right, and Lewandowski up front. Obviously. Sane won't be fit and or ready for the Champions League in terms of registration this this year. And Bayern Munich have a very good chance of winning the Champions League this year. But um, going into next season, uh, you have to, and even at this stage, I'm putting them as one of the favourites to win the Champions League next year, regardless of what happens this year. Because as I said, that front line is potent. And that's with you know the likes of Kingsley Coleman um, on, on the bench. So, um, yeah, that's a, a good signing. Good signing for Dortmund. Oh, sorry, for Bayern Munich. Man City, are they happy? They say they're happy with the deal. 
Most people think 50 million is a bit low, but you know what? He's got one year left on his contract. He hasn't played for a year, obviously, through injury. Um, I think there's a, a parting of ways between him and Pep that had to happen. 50 million plus 10% sell on fee for any transfer from Bayern Munich later. Maybe City are, are satisfied. You know, maybe they would have won. Because put it this, last summer they were talking 100 million. Then the injury and then the whole coronavirus, everything's contracted and the the money available is, is much less. So, with everything going on, maybe 50, 60 million might have been around the, the right price. So, I think everyone's probably satisfied with the deal. Man City obviously have to go in and replace him. Um, let's talk about Jack Grealish. Possibly, you know, he plays on the left of Aston Villa. Um, or some, maybe someone else going out there. Um, them going out to get someone else to replace him out on the wing. But they do have other areas that they need to fill. You know, centre-back is a massive, massive problem for them. Massive, huge problem. Huge problem. I think they probably need two centre-backs. Um, but definitely one world-class centre-back. Maybe he's happy with the full-backs. Mendy, for me, is unreliable fitness-wise and even footballing-wise as a defender. But he, he does suit City's attacking philosophy. Midfield, we know David Silva's gone, but Phil Foden's going to slot into that position. Maybe they're soon to go out and get an extra one. Gundogan's there, of course, Rodri and Kevin De Bruyne. But they definitely need to get another attacker. Is Jesus the man to, to fill in for Aguero whenever he's not there? For me, the jury's still out. Personally, for me, I don't think he's that guy. Um, but definitely the jury's out. He hasn't proved anything yet. I'll tell you that for a fact. He ain't proved anything yet. So there are a lot of areas that say you need to, to fill. So the Sane one doesn't make it any easier. But you know they've got the cash for it, um, whether it's in, in or outside of the rules. Um, and finally, uh, we heard some news last night that Thiago Silva could be joining Liverpool in the summer. We know that since Liverpool sold Coutinho, which was really the catalyst, other than Jurgen Klopp himself, but the catalyst for uh, the, their, their recent surge to the top of European football um, they've missed that creative spark in the middle you know they've signed Naby Keita he hasn't really performed for one reason or another in the way that they expected especially for the way he played for Leipzig and the amount that they spent on him um, Oxlade isn't really that kind of creative spark that Coutinho was or even as I mentioned uh, Thiago um, Alcantara uh, Wijnaldum isn't, Henderson isn't, Fabinho is a completely different position. So, I think they've still been on the lookout for that player. You know, the, the saga that happened with Nabil Fikir. And Thiago could be that guy. What, 20? How old is he? How old is Thiago, actually? Because he's been around for a hot minute. Um, Man United were linked with him. And I was actually gutted with him. I think I was under Moyes where we didn't get him. Uh... Thiago is 29, 29 years old. So he's in the in the peak of his career, playing very, very well for, for Bayern Munich. Would he leave Bayern Munich at this stage? I think it depends what happens this season. If they win the Champions League, I think I could easily see him going. If they don't, he may want to stay. He may want to stay. Not that Liverpool don't have a chance to win the Champions League, but maybe he, he, he wants to complete you know, the project, the, his journey at by a minute by winning that Champions League and with the addition of Sane that um, possibility will increase if they don't win it this year next year but you know playing under Klopp a great manager like Klopp in England Thiago could be a very very good fit for Liverpool I think he would add in that creative spot but he also doesn't lack in the defensive aspect that Klopp wants from his midfielder so for me he would be a perfect addition for Liverpool Therefore, personally, I don't want him to get them. I don't want him to get them. I hope it's just complete rumours. I haven't heard it from, I would say, the top, top-notch official sources, but it's a few rumours going around about that. Um, so we have to wait and see. Um, but as I said, big news. Jude Bellingham chooses Borussia Dortmund, rejects Manchester United and Ole Gunnar Solskjaer um, as he looks to continue his footballing education over in the Bundesliga. Guys, let me know your thoughts on everything I discussed in the comments below. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, share the video, and I'll see you lot soon.